Welcome back to Eurosatory News. I'm joined by Rudra Shuram, who is with DCM. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Now, is this your first time here at Eurosatory? Uh, this is the first time uh, displaying and presenting at Eurosatory, but not our first visit. Uh -huh. Yes. How are you finding the week so far? Oh, we're loving it. You know, uh, we finally have products that we can show at a global stage, and there's no better uh, global stage for strategic and defense-related products than this one right here. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do we have in front of us here? Uh, so over here we have the DCM uh, Trishul, uh -huh. which is a basically it's a quadcopter. Mm. that is certified to U.S. mill-grade uh, standards. Uh -huh. um, these are probably the best in class in terms of endurance and mm. range. Mm. Uh, on a single charge, you know, we can fly up to uh, 90 to 100 minutes. Wow. Yes. Wow. And it's lightweight. Yes, it's extremely yeah. lightweight. Very um, lightweight. With a payload capacity of about 3 kilos, okay. you could still have a total mTOW weight, which is maximum takeoff weight of less than 8 kilos. Mm which is extremely unique for this kind of weight category. Yeah. I imagine that it would take some level of having skin in the game, basically some investment of time to develop something of this standard. That being said, DCM has been in business for how many years? Uh, over 100 years. Over 100 years. Yes. So essentially a century's worth of knowledge and know-how when it comes to many, many things, not just this. Uh, you know, um, I'm the fifth generation working in the business mm. and uh, whatever industries mm. we're involved in, um, each of them has their own uh, time required to you know, take these, their, each of their own perfection paths. Mm. Uh, our venture into the defense space is only is a very nascent venture. Uh -huh. uh, it's only in its nascent stages. It's only been three to four years that we've been involved in the defense spaces. And apart from you know, these, uh, these drones, uh, we also manufacture armored vehicles mm. uh, for the Indian forces where we display. So each of these products requires its own time, due diligence, on both the development side as well as the productionization. I am, but I imagine even with that three years worth of, of being in the defense sort of sphere, you have all these other years of experience in terms of pivoting yes. towards the future as well as adding new layers to, to DCM's DNA. Right. And, uh, you know, we use that experience, mm. that managerial experience, the experience of how to set up uh, teams that are ideal for these sort of ventures. Mm. And uh, it took almost, uh, you know, a decade to even take a considerable step into getting into the defense space, you know, setting up a team, having business heads, having an R&D sections that can take care of the development and to, you know, make products that are ready to use, mm. not just at lab scale, you know, yeah. and suit the requirements of all the various customers we can have, both at the domestic level as well as the global level. Now, in the way of uh, armored vehicles, one of the big conversations that's been had quite a bit over the past few months is the idea of modernizing a lot of these legacy vehicles that are out in the terrain right now because the transition from from those legacy vehicles right. to the next generation of vehicles that will be ready and battle ready right there is a gap that needs to be filled. Oh, there's a huge gap yes yeah. uh, luckily uh, you know we are not a uh, conventional vehicle manufacturer mm. so we are not beholden to uh, our own uh, OEM chassis mm. or frameworks so we can pick and choose from the best of the best and the most modern technologies available mm. for creating these vehicles and we've already created some that are now in trial phases with various Indian uh, forces. Can you give us a sort of, uh, how should we say, can you paint a picture for us of, of what some of these vehicles might look like? Uh, see, um, on the Indian side, we haven't reached the level of, you know, uh, procuring Stanag 2 and Stanag 2 plus larger vehicles. These vehicles are uh, what they call the light bulletproof vehicles, so uh -huh. the LBPV. It's very unique for the Indian subcontinent due to the demographic and geographic conditions of India. You know, mm. India itself, mm. uh, you know, it has all the way from the Himalayas all the way to the uh, coastal regions. Yeah. We have deserts in India. We yeah. have ravines in India. So, you know, larger vehicles aren't always the most successful because exactly. these same vehicles have to traverse through uh, not only semi-urban and urban conditions, but even into the off-road and cross-country yeah. conditions. So smaller, lighter vehicles. Something that can, can essentially adapt to 
an ecosystem that is extremely diverse. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah. go from a desert, uh, uh, let's say, squad all the way to the forest. Yeah. And go up to the valley where, you know, we have active borders, come down all the way to the coastal regions. Well, the, the irony with that, though, is that, first of all, it's cost effective, I would imagine. Exactly. But secondly, the pivot toward the future should look like that, should it not? Yes. Where a lot of the, the legacy, huge hulking vehicles are being now viewed as not so effective when it comes to urban warfare, when it comes to adapting to multi-terrain well, and situations. Well, also covert situations, exactly. right? You don't want to have always a, you know, the, the, the old school thought was to have intimidating looking vehicles yeah. that were, you know, because of their look were intimidating enough for not having exactly. uh, you know any altercation now it's different yeah um the uh, aggressor is doesn't really they will attack at some point you know yeah. so if you have vehicles that are not too intimidating looking but do the same job and you know can be used for quick reactions mm. they will be successful in the same area what do you foresee DCM undertaking in the next five years, if you can tease. Yeah, so it's not a tease, it's very open. You know, okay. we're a public limited company in India and I think we've been very open with what we want to be involved in. It's definitely armored vehicles and drones are something that we are pushing as our prin principal projects. But we, uh, you know, we're patriots. We're patriots, of, we're Indian patriots. We hire defense, uh, uh, you know, ex-service professionals in our uh, uh, companies. We're very proud of our Indian forces and we feel that we want to supply them with the best product possible. Mm. But not just supply is pick up, you know, a foreign product and sell it and trade, but actually manufacture them in India. Mm. And you know, that goes with the ethos of the Indian government's uh, current policies of making in India yeah. and Atma Nirbhar Bharat, which means, uh, you know, self-reliant. Yeah. And, uh, but we don't want to just give them any run of, run of the mill product. As I've talked to you about the different uh, geographic conditions and different demographics that we have to deal with, mm. um, the products have to be unique in terms of the requirements of the forces. Yeah. So we work very closely with the forces in what their actual ground level battle ready requirements are. So they're equally invested in the product themselves. Yes, and you know, and more and more as conversation goes on, we come closer to a product required for them. Mm. So you know, apart from armored vehicle and drones, we're also looking at uh, you know a little more high tech, as if I can say, call it high tech, at least for. Uh, our conditions, you uh -huh. know, uh, is surveillance. Wow. Because the future of warfare will be from the control rooms. We yeah. all know this. There will be less of us on the ground and more of us yes, in the, in more, the, in more the of us brain behind centers. screens yeah. and behind tactical measures. So, you know, even now you, in your story, you've seen so many autonomous tanks, autonomous uh, war-ready uh, products. Yeah. So more and more we want to be ready and prepare our forces for that level of uh, protection. You know, our motto in defense is to protect our protectors. Yeah. And that's what we carry forward in whatever we get in the next five years. Well, in the next five years, we will definitely be keeping our eyes peeled for what DCM unveils because, well, DCM having 100 years in the game obviously is a voice to be listened to. Thank you so much for joining us. It has Thank been you an so absolute much. pleasure talking to you. Same. Thank you so much. Take care.